A couple of months ago, I made a video entitled Five Things That Flat Earthers Can't Explain. It was a great video, and as of yet, I've had no sensible answers. Now, miraculously, a month later, Multi Tom Tom releases this. Shall we check it out? Yeah, let's check it out. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, you may remember Multi Tom Tom from an old Flat Earth Fail compilation. Check out this clip. That black spot in the sky, that is the real sun. Classic. Well, he is back and he means business. Hello guys. I'm back with another educational video for you. Ha! <laughs> Good one. And this time I'm concentrating on the globe itself. Now, did you know that there are zero evidence for to support a globe? Absolutely none. Clearly you've not been looking, Multi Tom Tom. And I checked. I couldn't find any. Oh, you did look. That's strange. Oh, perhaps it's because you didn't understand. Well, fear not, that's what I'm here for, buddy. For the globe to work, they need to prove five fundamental things. And this video is entitled, Five Things the Globe Could Never Ever Prove. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Yes, please do, Multi Tom Tom. Can't wait. And in no particular order, here are the five things that the globe can never ever prove. One, water. Well, that's easy. Next. They tell us that water is the, uh, the most abundant substance element on earth well i don't think they do because it's not an element the most abundant element on earth or at least in earth's crust is oxygen they tell us that it covers 70 percent of the earth and they need to prove that water bends around a curve and forms into a hump over the oceans a hump nobody has ever proven that to be true. And the intellectually dishonest globers say the oceans follow the curvature, the curve of the earth. Well, they do. But they can't prove it. Water and liquids have certain qualities, physics that nobody can debunk. Water flows from higher elevation and then it seeks its level and settles. Well, the thing is, it doesn't need to be debunked because if the thing that that water is settling on or in is a sphere, then, well, you know. Nobody can deny that. If you do, you are being dishonest. Well, I'm not. Simple water debunks the spinning basketball earth in the vacuum of space. Well, it doesn't. Poor first point. Let's see if any of the others are any better. Number two, gravity. Oh, here we go. Did you know that even in 2020, gravity is still a theory? It has never been proven. 
That is simply not true. We have detected gravitational waves. These were predicted by Einstein. Some say it's a force. Others say it isn't. Simply shouting, Gravity, motherfucker, gravity, and then dropping the mic is not going to cut it anymore. Bit rude, but I would ask, what is causing that mic to fall then? Even the meaning has been hijacked by the scientific scientists. Initially, Sir Isaac Newton, in his book, called it gravitas, which in Latin means to have weight. Therefore, it is logical to conclude that when he saw the apple fall to the ground, he deduced that the, the weight of the apple was heavier than the air surrounding it. You don't say. We are talking here about a man that helped develop calculus, discovered the laws of optics, discovered the laws of motion, all before his 26th birthday. I think he would have realised that the apple weighs more than the air surrounding it. I think he was more concerned with the mechanisms as to how that apple falls. Therefore, it fell downwards to the ground. Makes logical sense, right? And also, gravity is... Uh, apparently it began with the Big Bang. So if there's no gravity, then there's no Big Bang. Very logical, multi Tom Tom. Number three, parallax. The true definition of the meaning of parallax from dictionary.com, it says, the apparent displacement of an observed object due to a change in the position of the observer. Again, these bastards have uh, hijacked the meaning of the term and made it completely different. They say stars are moving with us in the heliocentric model. It's like... Uh, Parallax is like looking at an object, then covering one eye with your hand and doing the same with the other and you'll see a slight difference. Yes, and with stellar parallax, the covering of your eye is the equivalent of being on one side of the sun at one time of the year and then on the other side of the sun six months later. It proves our orbit. Uh, in, the, in the object that you're looking at. You will have a di different perspective on the object, that's all. It's just simple as that. Yes, what's your point? The different perspective comes from our different points in our orbit. And in this example from uh, space.com, it gives you a diagram of how they calculate parallax, stellar parallax. They'll observe a star for example, in June, and take a reading, and then wait six months for the Earth to orbit around the Sun uh, to a different position in the solar system, and then take uh, another reading in December. Then calculate the angles, and they say they can prove that the star is light years away. Yes, it is simple trigonometry. The star in question is measured compared to the background of stars behind it that are further away. That is bullshit because the Earth does not orbit around the Sun. The Earth is stationary. So what's causing that apparent shift then with that star relative to the background stars behind it? And they're mistaking the twinkling of the star for parallax. Oh dear, a star's twinkle is caused by the turbulence of air of Earth's atmosphere. When you are out in space, there's no air, so there's no twinkle. You've just debunked yourself. Stellar parallax is complete bollocks. It's all made up. Everywhere on the plane, we see the same stars night in, night out. Each night, every night, we see the same stars. Except we don't. 
Orion, for example, is only visible between November and April here in the UK. That is impossible if we are moving in the, the solar system is moving, the galaxy is moving, the, the universe is expanding. We will surely we will see different stars. No, the distances involved are clearly way larger than you can comprehend. Stellar parallax is bollocks. Very scientific. Number four, the spin of the Earth. Did you know that nobody has ever proven the spin of the Earth? I think you will find that we have several times. Where in the world did you come from? Disneyland. Disneyland? I was never in Disneyland. Who gave you that information? You. Just now. Our location has been scrambled 400 times in the last second. So who knows? Right. Well, regarding the Earth spin, thank you, Mr. What do I call you anyway? My name is of no concern to you. You may also forget my face as soon as this conversation is over. Yeah, but you always call me back. Then forget my face after every conversation. Yeah, but how will I know... How will I know it's then you the next time? And how will I see the information as being from a trustful source if... Point taken. I'll bring this up to our marketing department. Right, so, round, round, round. Yes, we have proven Earth spin in multiple ways, like satellite imagery. Indeed. You guys have made some serious progress when it comes to documenting Earth spin. This one from Discover is particularly nice. Thank you, Simon Dan. I made the little logo in the corner. Who gave you this number? Hey, Mr. Agent. Ah, Dr. Stroganoff. Ugh, it's Stronagoff. My phone says differently. Listen, I have this recurring dream of you telling me that everything is going to self-destruct. Are you planting that into my brain? That information is classified. Yes. Um, guys, I'm kind of in the middle of a video here. Oh, hello, Simon Dan. Hello, Doctor. What happened to your hair? My wife. What are you debunking this time? Someone's saying that the Earth doesn't spin. Oh, welcome to the Muppets Show. I was just informing him how we have proven that the Earth is spinning. How you have proven? Yes. Foucault's pendulum is another proof. Ah, an excellent example. For those of you at home, Foucault's pendulum is a huge pendulum with a weight attached at the bottom. If you can get it spinning for long enough, the plane of the pendulum will rotate through 360 degrees as the Earth rotates beneath it. With a bit of clever maths, you can predict your exact latitude based on the deviation that the pendulum makes. Yes. Proof. But wasn't that Foucault? You didn't prove anything. Well, yes, but... but... Okay. Gyroscope drift. Ah, a very good- I heard a flat earther prove that. If you drop something from a tall tower, there's an eastward deviation. That was Johann Friedrich Benzenberg. Mm, sunrise and sunset. That's proof in itself. Circumpolar stars. Oh, you put the stars up there, did you? Doctor Who. Really? Um, thanks guys. Now, back to the- You know, I have a theory that Simon Dan is actually the 14th Doctor. Okay, I really need to update my antivirus. Simon Dan being the 14th Doctor right. is a very interesting theory. Exactly. And I should know. I'm a doctor. Stop hacking my show. Everybody out. You heard the man. Everybody out. You too. Oh. Right, okay. Take care, Simon Dan. Mr. Agent. And everybody else. Wash your hands. According to unverifiable statistics, one flat earth video is posted online every 12 hours. So what? Exactly. Number five, the curvature of the Earth. Did you know that the curvature has never ever been proven?
Well, that last one was easy, wasn't it? Multi Tom Tom's raging right now, shouting CGI, CGI. Right, that brings this episode of Flat Earth Friday to a satisfying close. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please, please do like and subscribe. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all Tuesday, where the star guest is this guy. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. See you all then.